Welcome to this episode of Caillou Talks. I am Caillou Ninja, and I am super pumped to get this podcast started. Let's cut to the chase. Today we're going to talk about being first. That's right, this is the third part of our free part series on being first. In our parts of the series, we talked about we talked to Roberto Alves, the first Latino mayor of Danbury. We also talked to Shailen Reyes, the first immigrant CEO of Union Savings Bank. If you listen to those episodes, you heard some inspirational stories about how they achieve being first. You heard their stories, learn some lessons, and talk about how they made an impact in their community. Today's guest is no different. Roy Bennett once said, don't let others tell you what you can't do. Don't let the limitations of others limit your vision. If you can remove your self-doubt and believe in yourself, you can achieve what you never thought possible. I know I can certainly identify with this quote, and I think my guest today will as well. Jermaine Atkinson is a career firefighter who grew up in Waterbury, Connecticut, and is currently the fire chief of Stratford, Connecticut. He means he is in charge of all the firefighters in the town of Stratford. He is in charge of putting out all the fires and keeping tens of thousands of people safe from harm. Also, he's the first African-American fire chief ever in the history of the town of Stratford Fire Department. Quite the title. He rose up through the ranks from firefighter to, to lieutenant to captain of deputy chief and now the chief of the department. Wow, this dude really climbed his way up the ladder. Let's get to know this guy. Great to have you, Chief. Hey, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me in today. So great to have you here. Thanks for making a trip to Danbury. And I know your time is very valuable, especially with you have two children and you want to spend some valuable time with them. And I respect that. So, now let me tell you, so... This is part one. Okay. It's called Talk to Me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's funny. It's good stuff. So part one is going to be Talk to Me. Second part is going to be Lessons You Learned. Third part is going to be How We Made an Impact in Your Own Special Way. Mm-hmm. And then fourth part is My Take. But let's not worry about my take. Let's worry about your take right now. So tell me your story, your life, and what makes you who you are. But please, don't leave out all the challenges because that's what we're trying to point out to many viewers that are going to be watching here right now. Okay. Um, Well, it goes back to when I was nine years old. I always wanted to be a firefighter. I liked big trucks. I liked driving, uh, watching them drive fast. And it was re- I was really drawn to being um, a firefighter back then. My mom saved a video or a, um, a picture that I had drawn. said I wanted to be a firefighter. And my dad gave me a hat with a little light on the top that would flash, and I'd run around the house. Who doesn't like trucks? Either. Exactly. That's what I say. <laughs> so uh, I started off with that, uh, and then I remember in my grade school, we had the police would come there, and we would meet them, and we were really comfortable with them. Um, as I grew older, I kind of forgot about it, and I just, you know, I went to a technical school. I was like, I liked cars, so I was uh, working on cars, doing body work, and then I went into detailing cars. I still wanted to drive fast and everything like that, but um, I started off with that, and then I went to go be a security guard. Mm -hmm. So I like to think that that movie Paul Blart they made was about me. That's what I used to do. Um, But then I worked on the ambulance for a long time, and then a guy said to me, hey, you ever think about, you know, getting on the fire department? I said, oh, I never thought about it. So then uh, two guys, two of my friends when I was a kid, they uh, put the idea in my head. They started bringing me to some firehouses, and I was like, Oh wow, this is gonna be really cool. So I started taking some tests, and the town of Stratford hired me. So what was the test like? It was like a test, like one plus one plus one, but five, uh, five. Yeah, I had some math on there. I had to do some reading comprehension and uh, some mechanical aptitude. So it was really cool. Um, and you know, I took a bunch of tests. Me and, and an interesting fact, you know, my dad used to take the test with me. So we get up on a Saturday morning, we go take the test, and we go, you know, go for breakfast. He'd pay, of course. So since he paid, I would go and make sure I'd go eat and everything. So it was good. But then the town of Stratford hired me as a firefighter, and I had a lot of fun driving fire trucks, putting out fires. Uh, it was really exciting. I'm happy to be there. When did you become a firefighter? Like how old were you, how old were you when you like became like like the first step of becoming a firefighter? I was 22 years old when what? I first became a firefighter. Why did you become a firefighter? Well, I did want to help people. 
I did enjoy it. Um, when I worked in the ambulance, I enjoyed going to calls. I enjoyed seeing all kinds of stuff. And the fire department that I grew up around, the Waterbury Fire Department, one of the best fire departments out there, uh, they really inspired me to want to do more. So uh, I um, would go out there and watch what they would do. I'd see them on the ambulance. And it was really exciting what they were doing. I said, I want to be a part of that. And I enjoy the most uh, is helping people and uh, the impact that I can make on people throughout their day. That's nice. Did you face any challenges as a black firefighter? Uh, I don't think I faced any particular challenges as that. Um, I think in any community, um, everybody thinks that they're going to get burned by fire uh, when they first get started because they don't know. Uh, so I looked at it as... Uh, it was a new experience for me. It was something new. Nobody in my family was a firefighter before. So I said, hey, I'm going to be the first person that pushes down this road. My family was really supportive of me. So I don't think that, that um, I had any special um, difficulties or challenges. Um, you know, I applied for a couple of different fire departments, but Stratford's the one who picked me, and I've been with them ever since. So what was it like being a firefighter? Oh, it was exciting. Um, never knowing when the bell was going to go off, going on different calls. I met so many new people. I was young. So it's like I consider them my family. So um, it's really, really fun. I had a lot of people teaching me stuff. I had great mentors. And I remember the, the first day I walked into the firehouse, the first guy I met, Mark Krasner, um, he was probably my most impactful person because he really took me under his wing and he made sure I learned a lot of stuff under him. That's a very nice. Most people will agree that you've taken the road less traveled to get to where you are right now. Mm. How was that journey for you? Was it hard? Was it exciting? It was hard, exciting, and challenging. Um, Talk, explain. So what happens is um, I never thought that I was ever going to promote and be somebody's boss. I was happy just going on calls, going, putting out fires, doing things like that. And one of my mentors said, hey, did you ever think about this? I said, oh, I never thought about it. Um, and what he would used to do, he would catch me around the firehouse and he would quiz me. And a couple of times he caught me and I said, ooh, I don't know the answer to that. So he really um, made me start thinking about doing more. And he put some challenges in front of me and said, hey, I want you to study these books. I want you to go to this class. I want you to practice this. So when I was doing that, I said, wow, he really opened up the door for knowledge for me. And uh, I had a lot of senior firefighters who were helping me. Um, one of them in particular was Chief Lance Edwards in the Bridgeport Fire Department. Who's that guy? He's the chief of the Bridgeport Fire Department, but he was one of the guys who'd come and um, really motivate me. Craig Tibbles, a lot of my senior guys, they would help me um, challenge myself. And once they started the challenge rolling, I said, I like this. I like how this feels. I'm going to keep going. So I continue to do more. So they opened the door and opened the floodgates. And once I learned, the more you know, the more you learn, the better you can help the citizens you protect, I was all in. I was sold. So I continued to go to classes. They kept motivating me, and they were really helping me go down that road. That was very nice. You sound like a great guy. What other jobs, like before you had a firefighter, what other specific jobs did you have in your life? Oh, wow. I was always a worker. So when I was about your age, I was cutting grass. <laughs> I was shoveling snow. I was raking leaves. So I was doing a lot of work around my neighborhood. Um, and then I worked on an oil truck. So I had my CDL. When I first got in the fire department, I had my CDL, my commercial driver's license. So I used to deliver oil. I used to deliver propane. And right before I got in the fire department, I used to deliver water for Crystal Rock. So a water delivery company. So I would do that. And that was pretty cool. I like to drive. You know, you can see the common theme. I like cars, trucks, and driving. Usually I read the cars right now, but I'm not going to do it. Okay. All right. I'm just going to I'm just gonna wing it. What's so, your taste in music? Oh, man, I like, you know, what would surprise you is probably house music. I like house music, and I like hip-hop music. But on slow days, I like some jazz, too. What's, I don't like jazz. 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 Well, it's, you know, it's like the elevator music. I like the elevator music. Oh, like Christ elevation? Um, no, more like the when you get in the elevator 
and you're looking at a person and the slow music is like do 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 do. Oh yeah. Stuff like that. The slow elevated music. I don't like that music. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you want to hurry up and get off the floor and get where you're going. Yeah, it's like do, 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 do. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Sometimes like this. <laughs> do, 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 do. That's why I like to tell jokes in the elevator. Also I said, Hey, elevator the guy in the elevator joke. Oh like so I I don't know any elevator jokes, but I have this one. I have this joke. Why did the turkey cross the ice? I don't know. To get to your, to get to the other side and die. Oh man, <laughs> poor turkey. Yeah, you like you rocked the ice, uh-huh. and then the ice broke. He said, and he said this. That turkey's on thin ice. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. Next time I'm going on your comedy tour. Oh, comedy <laughs> tour. I don't have a comedy tour, but thanks for the suggestion. You never know. Maybe you know. Maybe when I retire, when I mean, I retire, like when I get too old and retire, maybe I'll look into open to open house comedy. I'll be there. We think, manager. We think. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna look at the cards. I'm gonna. I'm gonna wing it, man. I'm gonna wing it. Get out of here. <laughs> get on out of here. Let's go, buddy. Read the cards. So how was mi- how was middle school for you? Middle school was uh, was really good. Um, I went to a regular middle school. Um, I didn't really do sports, um, but I had good grades because my dad was pretty tough. He said, hey, you got to have good grades. So he would stand me to do my homework, and he was pushing, pushing, pushing. You know how that goes. And he gave wow. me a good foundation to give me uh, to give me a good education. That sounds that reminds me of a, of a dad. Oh, yeah. That's what they. That's what we do. Dad you know? say, they, dad say, but you know what I mean about dad? They, like, they teach you. They push you. They get you out of your comfort zone. They help you. It may look like that they're actually just pushing you. Yeah. <laughs> it feels very uncomfortable. You're like, say, why is he doing this to me? But they're actually just trying to help you. They're actually just trying to like expand your horizons. They're actually just trying to make you be the best student you can possibly be. That's what dads they do. That's take they don't just help you physically, they help you emotionally. Yeah. They help you expand your world. That's what I like most about dads. Mine particularly. He's very good at what he does. Despite the fact that sometimes I I question, why is he doing this to me? <laughs> Absolutely. Look, look, look at his face. Look at his face. Look at he just wants me to read it, but he doesn't. He doesn't want me to talk about him anymore. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about you anymore. Okay, let's move on to part two. All right. Now we're gonna talk about the lessons that you have learned. Question one. There's like the quiz. All right. Question one. <laughs> on the fire scene, you have been responsible for people's lives. Also, oh, there is no wrong answer to this. All right. Guaranteed A. What have you learned from that? Well, what I've learned is that a person's life can change in an instant with a fire. So we really try to educate people to be preventative, to put their fire extinguishers uh, in the kitchen, to have working smoke detectors, and to have a family plan. Once we get you to plan for the emergency, when the emergency happens, there's less chance of something bad happening. Uh, one of the things that I take away from every call that I go to is that this is someone's life, this is someone's belongings, their precious belongings, their their home, where they're safe at. So I really try to take their feelings into consideration and help them to realize that we're here to help them. We're going to um, do our best to help them uh, move forward from this incident and give them the right resources that they need to help rebuild their life. So the, the lesson I learned is to continue to be considerate and kind of others and respectful of their property and always taking into consideration that these are real people that we're sworn to protect. That's very nice. Okay, like I said, it's quite a scarcity day. So right. you got a correct answer for that. Of course, right. there's no wrong answer. Question two, who has been your biggest inspiration and why? Ooh, my biggest inspiration. Um, there's a couple people there. Um, but I would say my first lieutenant I ever met, Mark Krasner. Um, he, uh, he was serious, he was focused, and he was committed to the job. So he was my first mentor that I met being in the fire department, and I stayed with him for a long time, and he taught me a lot of stuff. So he impacted me the most with the fire department, and others have taken um, on that role. But he was the first person I walked in um, to the door and said, hey, I wear pajamas at nighttime. So 
Sounds like he wasn't the one who taught you your sense of comedy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I did there? I see what you did. So, okay, again, guarantee day. All right. According to my dad, JP, which is over here, smiling, he's waving now, but the viewers cannot see him. He's like a shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Being a fire chief can be pretty complicated. A lot of decisions, complicated choices to make. And knowing that sometimes your choices have people's lives in, at, at stake. And and if I would sit out, I would do this. I'm jumping out the window. <laughs> <laughs> like if that happens to me, I'll like jump out the window like this. Goodbye. <laughs> Deal with it. <laughs> but seriously. You're not me. I'm not you. So what have you learned about leadership from your career as a fire chief in the city of Stratford? What I've learned about leadership is that you have to know the people that work with you. They don't work for me. They work with me. And I care about them. I care about their families. And I care about how my decisions impact them. So when I think about... um, either buying something, changing something, or doing something, or impacting their lives, I try to think about the people and how to impact them. So I try to look at every part of a situation, and sometimes it keeps me up late at night uh, worrying about, hey, did I make the right decision? But what I do is I take into consideration all the factors, and I think about the people, and I make the best decision I can based on my experience, my knowledge, and whatever situation it is. Mm -hmm. And when I'm done and I make that decision... I'm confident, but I also consult with my team, and my team is uh, Deputy Chief Jim Buck. He's my guy. We work together, we communicate together, and we make, try to make good decisions together. That's very nice. Again, correct. Fourth question, what are the top three priorities for U.S. Fire Chief? My top three priorities are to protect the lives of the citizens that we're sworn to protect, our firefighters, uh, and to uh, mitigate any circumstance that we come into contact with and stabilize um, the community that we're continued to um, be prepared to protect them. So the people, the stuff, and the incidents, and moving forward, how we can uh, continue to protect them and make, um, make our community safe. So question five, what's next for Chief Atkinson? Wow. Um, what's next? I said uh, we're looking to um, increase our social media presence. We're looking to grow different programs in the department, and that's what that's what we got so far. So we're looking to make good progress in Stratford. We're going to build off the old progress we've made, and we're trying to um, increase our footprint to help the community. That's very nice. So this is part three. I want to take a moment to talk about the recent work you have done for the autistic community in Stratford. As you know, I'm autistic and I love this concept. But I have a couple questions. By a couple, I mean eight. Question one, what can you tell me about the autism safety alert form? How does it work? Well, how the form works is that you put it away in a nice little packet. You go onto our website. You can get the information out and you can put all the information down so that way when we deal with or we come into contact with a member of the autistic community, we know how to communicate with them, we know some of the triggers that they have, and we're able to um, help them in a way, be there for them in a way that's helpful to them, and it doesn't overwhelm them. So we're concerned about anyone in our community, and any way that we can improve our communication with them, we're going to do that. So if you fill out that form, when we come to your home, we look for the form, we read it, we see what we have to do, and that way we can help you the best way possible. Well, now I understand. Well, I, I don't know what to say. Thank you for answering that question. Run down to more to go. <laughs> How did the idea for this program came about? How what what gave you the first idea to give you this? Well, the good thing is about being the chief of the department. There are many people that work with you that have great ideas, and there are two people who ha- came up with this idea. Uh, one of our lieutenants and our training captain. They came up with the idea, they met up with the group, and they brought that training to the department. 
When it comes to me, I look at it, they give me an overview of what happens, and I said, hey, that's a good idea. Let's do this. So that's a decision that me and my deputy talk about, and when we all work together, we come up with good ideas like that. Mm-hmm. And all the programs, you know, very new, mm-hmm. like you, you developed it two months ago. But have you had any success stories yet? I've heard of one success story that as soon as they finished the training, they were able to use it right on a call, and that came out to a good outcome. So I was definitely happy to hear that, and I was excited for our community that we're able to uh, start off slow, but we're going to start moving up more so that way we can help more people in our community. So I'm excited. I definitely think it's a good idea moving forward, too. So what gets you excited about the day? What motivates you? Well, what motivates me is the challenge, any challenge that comes my way. It's like uh, my day is going to be different every day. Uh, So I walk in and say, hey, what do we got? And uh, sometimes I have some leftover stuff from the day before. But I tell you what, the most exciting thing is if we get a fire call and I get to leave the office and it's like, oh, we're going to a fire. I can go see our people in action. I can go be supportive of them. And the other day I went to go watch their live fire training, some of the best training out there, and they did a really good job. And I was definitely excited to see that how hard that people work. And that inspires me to continue to work harder for them. That's, that's very inspiring and very nice. What do you expect yourself What do you think of yourself as a role model? I know that I have an important role as a role model. That A lot of people watch everything that I do, uh, especially my kids. My kids watch me, and I want them to know, and every kid that I come into contact with is that you can can do anything you put your mind to. You just have to work hard. Um, There's going to be some challenges. There will be some setbacks. There will be some tough days. But if you continue to push forward, you're going to make progress. So I say – If every day you do one thing, at the end of the year, you've done 365 new things. So if you continue to do one thing a day and make continuous progress, you're going to continue to move forward, and then you'll be inspiring to others because they see how well you work and how hard you're willing to work and how you won't quit and you won't give up. That's very nice. Now, bonus question. This is not on the cards. (laughs) All right. Look, my dad is doing this. Do it for dad. I'm improvising. So if your children are watching this right now, which is at, which actually they are right now, they're in the lobby watching this in the camera, what would you say to them? Because they can hear this. Because they can hear every word right now because the camera can is actually connected to the lobby. I would say work hard, set goals for yourself, and don't quit until you achieve them. You can do anything you put your mind to. I'm gonna say the I'm gonna say to them the message I say to every kid that's watching this: stay in school, eat your veggies, and you might get some merch. <laughs> stay in school, eat your veggies, buy merch. Okay, moving on. With all we have accomplished so far, what haven't you done that you want to do? Like anything that you didn't have the time to do, but you are interested in it. Yes. I just started driving my RV, so my goal is to have lunch at the Grand Canyon in my RV. So, Like an RV that had, like, you, know, like, you can sleep in? Yep, that you can sleep in, you can drive in. I want to drive out there. That's my goal. I want to get across. I want to do a cross-country trip. I've never had enough time to do it. For your children? With the kids, jump in the RV. Who's going to take care of the house when you're gone? I don't know. Maybe you guys will stop by and help me out. No, I'm gonna Let the dog you. out. Are you going to be with me? Yeah, I'm going to be with you. Oh. I'm not going to I'm gonna stay while I'm cleaning your house. I'm going to call my neighbor then. I'll have my neighbor come over. Okay. I want to I wanna be with you. I'm going to pull some strings to my mom. Hey, mom, can I call? <laughs> yeah, I know she's going to say. It's a, bad, it's a stupid idea. She's going to say no anyway. <laughs> she doesn't even let me. I know the Texas, the Grand Canyon is like somewhere in Texas, right? California? Yeah. It's going to be a long way then. Oh, yeah. And we're going to do airplane? We're going to do airplane? She's going to all drive? I'm going to drive. That's, that's going to be like an eight-hour drive. It'll be a long drive, but it'll be good. We're going to go see the America. I'm going to try my iPad. I don't know. Moving on. What advice would you give to a young person interested in your career in public safety when we release this to the internet? Oh, wow. I would say the public safety community needs you. Uh, continue to be a good student, be a good citizen, get good grades, work hard, 
and we've got a job waiting for you. How about this? Are you going to say, like, this not in the posters? Like, I want you to join <laughs> the safety... The public safety defense system. That's it. Come on down to the Stratford Fire Department. Like We're the, ready like, for you. I want you. <laughs> I want you to join the army. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, look at that. All right, Chief. This is the last question. This is a deep question for you to answer only. Okay. You can be completely honest. How important is it to believe in yourself? It's very important to believe in yourself because a lot of times other people don't believe in you and a lot of people doubt you. But if you believe in yourself and you know you're doing the right thing, you keep pushing forward and you'll achieve anything you put your mind to. Welcome to the Bean Bean Challenge. Today we have Chief Atkinson and his two daughters. I'm Elise and I'm Amira. So, we, we all know the rules, but I'm going to recite the rules for someone who just watched this episode and doesn't care about the first, second, or letters. So, each of you are going to do one spin. I'm going to do one spin, too. And the person in this side either spits their jelly bean or drinks a cup of shame will automatically lose, and so does the rest of the team. They... If I win, I am still the reigning champ, and you will all have to drink from the cup from the same cup of sh of shame, and then do your jelly bean germs on it. Oh, and it's and your failure will be will be broadcasted on the internet, <laughs> <laughs> so everyone will see. <laughs> That's right. That you know you rules. So you're gonna sh your internet credit is gonna be shattered. Even even if you don't have internet, it's going to be shattered before you even started. <laughs> but if I lose, I'm going to lose. You get nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but still, if, lose or not, you're going to get a special gift. Yeah. Caillou Mug merch. That's pretty good. So, you go first. <laughs> All right. Pass, pass it around. Pass the bean. Pass the bean. Pass oh, man. the bean. All rotten. The mean bean of shame. No, it's a cup of shame, man. <laughs> this is not the cup oh, of shame, by the way. I either got tutti frutti or stinky socks. Oh. I rather have a stinky sock. Is that orange? No, it's, it's this one. Oh. Like, let me check. Is it, does it have, is it mildly pink? Yeah. yeah. Does the picture, what does the picture look like? Is it the same? Yeah. Compare it with the others. It, it, it's the same, all right. All you, right. You, you. <laughs> Here's the good side. You can hardly tell the difference between the two veins. <laughs> oh, oh, we have a cheater. Oh, I finally should hit the jelly bean around. I got tutti frutti, guys. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we have a survivor. Oh. Oh. She's the first. Oh. Oh. Wait. No. She's not. No. Oh, she was in denial. <laughs> she was in denial. <laughs> She's in the denial state. Oh, you man. Got this girl. Gotta finish it. Curse You're girl in. power. Woo. You're right. the first one to survive stinky socks oh, for the first that's turn. Nice. <laughs> Drink the water. Oh. <laughs> More nurse! Oh. Medic! <laughs> Medic! Oh. Who's up next? She's up next? Yeah, but after that, it's you, man. <laughs> no, don't, 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 if you eat that, you'll be four, you'll four for the match. Oh. She, have to, she has I to suffer. I got peach or barf. Oh. You spin it again? oh, that's a legendary flavor like that. <laughs> oh, you can't spin it again? And no cheating. Uh, you're you can hardly <laughs> tell the difference. So bad. Oh. Uh, oh, man, I'm sweating so bad right now. What people can see in the video is that you can smell it. Yeah, oh, my, I can smell right from her breath, man. Man. What do you get? Uh, uh, drink just the water drink the water to. and nope. save yourself. Nope. Uh, just oh, drink man. the water and shame and save I'm yourself. You free up with a valiant uh, effort, but it's uh, over. All right. If you eat the mint, you'll forfeit. Just uh, eat right. the mint and save yourself. I hope I <laughs> Come on, Chief, you got this. Come on. Uh, <laughs> you either it? got... Oh, butter butter popcorn, popcorn or rotten eggs. eggs. Oh, that's oh. a good one. Yes. <laughs> Everyone oh. who eats that always collapses. Oh. <laughs> just, ask, just ask Dad Thomas. <laughs> I'm sweating already. Come 
Don't forfeit. It's rotten egg. <laughs> you two are the you three are the first three people to get uh. bad to get the bad flavors in three in a row. <laughs> this is Tayu Talks Mean uh. Bean Challenge history happening right here. Uh. Never in my life uh. have we seen bad flavors three uh. in a row uh. in our series. It's your uh. turn. That's <laughs> disgusting. Oh, I see. Noobs. Oh. <laughs> I mean, it tastes, uh, it that's like juicy pear booger. Wait, what? Juicy pear booger. Oh. And the fact that he eats it so calmly. I got booger. <laughs> oh. This should be against the law. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's better than tasting than your breath. Oh. Nah, it's way worse. <laughs> it smells like a oh. locker room in here now. It's like, what's going on? Oh. He eats it so calmly like it doesn't taste like anything. I play this game. Oh, man. Every time I play this game, I always win. I'm immune. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Well, none of us collapse. You know what this means. Sudden death. Oh, we got to do it again? (laughs) No. Wait a minute. You three will get... How about this? How about Chief this one last spin? I'll oh, do your yeah. spin for him. I'll do your spin for you, too. You will get... I'll do his spin for him. Uh, I was kind of suggesting that I would choose a jelly bean for you free. I was suggesting that you, I mean, choosing liver and onion no, for all three of you. Let's <laughs> the side. Let's I mean, I would, I would take in liver and onions because I like liver, but I hate onions. Mm. It's wrong. Oh, I got the same bad. one. Yeah. So if yeah. I get the same one, I can spin again. Spin you again. spin again. again. Let's, let's get something for Chief that's... Oh, boy. You either have... Dirty dishwater or birthday cake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's going to collapse. Not, not, Here. That's not that we'll both bad. eat it because they're the same ones. No, wait, if you enjoy eating it, she's eating it too. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. That's the oh, rules of me being yeah. challenged. Uh, right. So she's going to enjoy it. So we're in the library. I can see right team. here. You got this. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to get a worse flavor too. Oh, look at her. You got this. Nope. You got this. Do it. You got <laughs> no. this, guys. You know you want to. You know you want to. This you, is the nastiest thing. Just give up and save yourself. Don't I can't do it. quit. Don't do it. Oh. Save the family name. I think Don't. I might have got broken. Uh, uh, I got the dirty diaper. Wait, is it liquidy? Being <laughs> bad with dishwater. I don't know what it is, but it's okay. not flavor yet. <sighs> okay, I'm ending this. If I survive this, yeah, I win. <laughs> one last. That's it. I'm doing one bean spin. But I'm going to rise the stakes a bit. If I don't survive this, if I bar, if I drink the cup of Shane, does this family wins. But if I survive this, and if I swallow the whole thing, I win the match. Okay, but what if we all win? We all I, win. I, 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 think I almost quit. Right now. <laughs> I think I'm ready to quit. Except for Chief. Chief. <laughs> I, Chief stomach. Is I got Rudy Tootie or Stinky Socks. That's the same for... Uh, okay. Come on. <laughs> Drink the water if you have to. Well, There's the no universe says so. <laughs> okay, let's do this quickly because I think we're losing our games. <laughs> oh my goodness. Don't this is, no, let's, let's keep doing that. This is actually funny. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm good at it. If I should practice, I win. Which one was that? Oh, um, <coughs> it's delicious. Which what one is was that? We did it. Okay, so. He wins. I'm out. How about, how about now we thank our guests for being such oh. good sports? Oh, yeah. That was I win, but your surprises. Thank you. There you go. Now right, drink the water of shame that you so rightfully deserve. They lost. <laughs> <laughs> I tricked you all. <laughs> it's all I got to drink mouth some now. mouthwash. Oh, man. You see, everyone who's watching this, these people lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. See, look at the camera. <laughs> look at the <laughs> Oh, okay, fine. But seriously, guys, thank you for joining. It has been an honor to have Fire Chief Jermaine Atkinson at my show today. As I mentioned at the top of my show, this is the first part of our three-part series on being first. But this episode showed us more than just being first at something. Our guest today talked about being yourself, working hard, and having determination to stay focused. From becoming a young firefighter to climbing the ranks all the way to chief, Jermaine Ackingston has showed us what his journey was like. So let's take another look at the quote I opened just today at the top, of the, on top of the intro, so that maybe it can introduce a new meaning to this. Roy Bennett said, Don't let others tell you what you can't do. 
Don't let the limitations of utter of others limit your visions. If you can remove your self doubt and believe in yourself, you can achieve what you never thought possible. So what I'm taking away is this: Don't be limited by what anyone, and I mean anyone, thinks, feels, or says says about you. You control your future, and that's right. You determine what your life is going to be. You get to choose what success is for. You get to choose what you want your life to be. You get, get, you get to get out there and get it done. You don't have a choice. You got to get out there. Because life is all about making it happen for yourself. Don't let anyone else tell you what you can't be done. It's up to you. So, so go and get it. Don't forget to check out and support our website, www.kaiutalkspodcast.com, and get some merch. And that's it for now. Thank you for joining me, Kai Ninja, on Kai Talks. See you next episode.